what stood out the most for you from the study results? I think there's, there's a couple of points that we'll raise from the, from the report. The first point is definitely that 2011 is going to be a challenging year. Certainly the, the, the 10,000 odd respondents that we have have actually highlighted a number of risks over and above what they consider to be serious from last year from technical challenges. The second point I think is that the, the respondents from the report are also saying that they don't have enough, potentially enough training to cope with these new challenges and they're seeking ways in terms of trying to address those uh, technical challenges that they're, they're going to have in 2011 if not 2012 uh, as well. What conclusions uh, or anything in the data that gave you uh, the most concern? I think the concern that we have is that obviously the three key areas of challenge we have is with cloud security, mobile security um, and also application security and I think those three key, three key areas are challenges that the IT security and IT community is going to have um, over, the over the course of the next couple of years. I think to, to try and answer that question a bit more articulately, I think the, the challenge that they're going to have based on, on those risks are a little bit combined. So whilst you might go off and um, try and solve the cloud security issue, I think the mobile um, issue is certainly included in there because of the applications that are coming with the mobile community. And of course that then drives the application security challenge, as it always has done. Um, so the application security challenge is, is changing slightly in, in context to cloud and mobile. There's a lot of early adopters uh, coming through, and you can see that through, fr from some of the respondents here. While they're, they're saying they understand the problem, um, what they don't know is how to solve the problem yet. And I think this is, this is coming through from the training component. Um, and I would say that it, on various different regions, there are, there are more impetuses based on perhaps the business growth. And you can certainly see in Asia Pacific, there is a definitely perceived growth um, of new trends in that region regarding those key risks. Did any uh, conclusions or any of the data contradict uh, what you thought about the profession or the industry? Um, I think what, what was interesting coming out of the data was that from the, from the risks to mobile computing, there was the standard stock answer that about 70% of the solutions there are related to cryptography. I think what's interesting coming out of the, out of the statistics from the respondents is they're saying actually 10 to 11 percent of the solutions now for mobile com uh, computing are related to digital rights management, which is new. Um, it's perhaps not fully um, vetted in the industry, but that's indicating a trend to solve that particular problem. I think that was an interesting uh, snippet of information that came out from, from that particular aspect. Uh, do you believe the uh, profession is up to the task of defending against the, the threats that were detailed in the study? And if not, well, how, how can they do it? How can they be prepared? I think what was interesting from the statistics was that the, there's a compound annual growth rate of around 13%. So we're going to end up in five years' time with about four, potentially four and a half million security professionals across the world and across all industries. Now, is that a sustainable component or not? Um, and I think it depends how you, what you would label a security professional. What we're seeing at the moment in the industry, I think, is that the more IT professionals are adopting more security um, certifications to help them with their day-to-day -day job. So typically an IT developer might be attracted to the CSSLP because that shows he's got a common body of knowledge regarding how to develop secure applications. So that four and a half million compound annual growth rate um, will be interesting to see if that materializes. So certainly as we go into cloud and mobile computing, there is now pressure to, for what, what, what we call in the industry, automization. So we're building in these controls and we're, see, we're trying to externalize the security back into IT. So IT has the, if you like, the common body of knowledge to deal with the issue and the security professionals can, can essentially uh, move back into risk management. And certainly from the training um, components that were de described in the, in the report, there were two aspects to the, to the demands on training. One was information risk management, which is always there, and the other one is application security training. I think those two sort of were highlighted in the report. So whether the compound annual growth is actually going to be realistic or we're actually going to be measuring it slightly differently in five years' time, we're going to see more security certified IT professionals to help them with the application security. I think that's, that's going to be the question. 
And is there anything from the uh, data from EMEA that you found uh, interesting? I think with EMEA, EMEA is going to be more, seems to be more pessimistic about the amount of training and money available in 2011 and 2012. Certainly the austerity measures that we have in EMEA, uh, perhaps putting some dampers on the overall budget spend um, and perception of budget spend that IT professionals with ha will have. And certainly EMEA comes out bottom in terms of the new or improved amount of budgets being made available for them to do the training. Uh, compared to Asia Pacific, which seems more optimistic about the level of money they're going to be able to, to spend on training and education. And, and what do you, how do you feel about the, uh, the social networking uh, data part of the, part of the study? That's very interesting. So again, in context of the overall, um, overall issues, I think social media at the moment is a bit of an unknown to IT people. And the business hasn't articulated the requirements in terms of how they're going to use social media. And certainly IT at the moment um, are demonstrating they actually haven't got, haven't got any direction from the business in terms of how to control it, whether to block it or not to block it, or even to, uh, to, to, to apply some sensible IT security policies to social media. Despite the fact that now the business is more than past the early adoption stage and it's more than a marketing tool, and they're engaging with um, their business counterparts and customers and so forth. And then this sort of like compounds the, the data leakage issue that we have with cloud computing and mobile computing. And, I, and IT is, is definitely, you can see from the respondents, you know, they are concerned and uh, are interested in finding out what the business wants and also what are the technical controls that might be applicable to that type of uh, issue. Is there anything, uh, would you, how would you or the organization use, use the study? I think that's, that's a valid point. So from this study, you've probably heard me articulate a number of interpretations I think the financial community that I work in, and certainly the industry, other industries globally, will, will take their interpretation of these reports and apply them to, for their own particular business cases, if not um, security risk assessments. I think going forward, I think it's going to be interesting to try and compare the information from the IT respondents to, to try and compare to the business respondents on other other surveys and see if there is a mismatch there between what the business thinks is going on in the world to what IT thinks is going on in the world. But we'll certainly use it and explain, you know, in a current in the current economy and the in the current uh, rapid um, development of applications and the and the uh, early birding of um, IT solutions, the the increase in demand for professionals to work in solving IT security issues is growing and you know we can't stand by and, and ignore that particular issue.